Christ has entered, not into a sanctuary made with hands, a copy of the true one, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Christ our Passover. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all but the life he lives he lives to god so also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to god in jesus christ our lord alleluia christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep for since by a man came death by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead and as in Adam will all die. So in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Oh 
A reading from Acts. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 9, the first song of Isaiah, is found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 86. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense. And he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Second reading is from 1 John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and obey his commandments, for the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and by blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 18, A Song to the Lamb, is found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 93. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is. And by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God. For every family, language, people, and nation. A kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so, to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb. Be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and evermore. The Gospel of our Lord according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this. To lay down one's life for one's friends you are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, 
but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable before you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Well, this morning's lessons, including the collect, all, every single one of them have to do with love. And as a preacher, it's a little, um, daunting to talk about love because it is a word that is used so commonly um, that I, I'm afraid we tend to hear it as wah, 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 wah. And how do you enliven that? How do you make it so that it grips you um, and captures your imagination? But let me just use a few of the phrases that we heard this morning. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises. And that's our prayer to God. And then in John's letter, he goes on to say, By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God. For the love of God is this. And then we go into the Gospel of John. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be complete and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No greater love than this or no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends. I have called you friends. I am giving you these commands that you may love one another. So you see why I said this morning's lessons are all focused about or focused on being loved, and in turn, loving. Perhaps it's because this Sunday is Mother's Day, um, and I tend to get a little sentimental um, as I miss my mother deeply. And I don't want to make love just about sentimentality because then it lacks the guts. It lacks the flesh, the bones, and the skin. But I am reminded of two stories, and I know that I've told one of them before. Um, one had to do with a children's camp and a child that got so profoundly homesick that he seemed to be inconsolable. And a friend of mine was a counselor at that camp, and she went to console the child and reminded the child that um, God is love. And the child, um, here she was just throwing out these big theological statements, and the child looked up at her with tears and basically said, would you just told me, sometimes I need, I need skin. I need flesh and bones to know that this is real. And of course, we all do. Love is not something abstract. And in the human condition, love is literally enfleshed. It requires um, several things. It requires presence. It requires flesh and bones. And then that reminded me of that profound um, story, children's story of the Velveteen Rabbit, this new toy, 
who ask, how do you become real? He asked um, the skin horse, and the skin horse says, well, real isn't how you're made. It's a thing that happens to you. When a child loves you for a long, long time, not just to play with, but really loves you, then you become real. And the rabbit asked, does it hurt? Sometimes the skin horse said, for he was always truthful, when you are real, you don't mind being hurt. Does it happen all at once, like being wound up or bit by bit? It doesn't happen all at once, said the skin horse. You become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easily or have sharp edges or have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off and your eyes drop out and you get loose in the joints and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all because once you are real, you can't be ugly except to people who don't understand. So we're being given something that is at the heart of Christianity. And what we're being given is the knowledge that we are loved, that we are not ugly, that we are made real by God's love. And I think there's that further step that we literally have been asked to embody that ourselves. So, so much so that we in turn love. And I think not only being loved, but the capacity, the doing, the actual loving ourselves. I don't mean to love myself, but for me to love adds the depth and profundity of our reality. I was reminded by a Canadian theologian and preacher, um, great Anglican priest named Herbert O'Driscoll, that in the last several weeks since Easter, that Jesus frequently has been teaching since his resurrection. He has been teaching his followers, his, his apostles, his disciples in that upper room before his ascension, which we celebrate this coming Thursday. And the things that he's been teaching us that we've been hearing about um, over the last five, six weeks are that he will be with us and it has everything to do with his presence. It is the sense in our own lives and those of others that he is within us. He gives himself for us to embody his spirit. So that's the first thing that Herbert O'Driscoll said. The second thing is that he gives us peace. A shalom. And it's not just peace as in calm, but it is a sense that all shall be well and it's there for a reason. And then last week we were given the image of um, Christ being the vine and us the branches. And by that, I think we are to gather that there's something about the way his life flows into ours, and it's also a very Eucharistic image. And in this week's lesson, we're given the final two qualities, that of joy. And I wish there was a way that we could, um, in a sense, declare a reign of joy, that this would be a great um, accomplishment 
of the church to be about the proclamation of joy. Um, and the other, the final um, aspect of, of Christ and our learning has to do with the fact that he, he invites us into friendship and he calls us friends. With that and my sense of sentimentality, I finally went to one of my favorite, favorite hymns. And it is um, to the tune of Land of Rest. But let me just read these words because I think they were written for this Sunday's um, selection of biblical readings. I come with joy to meet my Lord, forgiven, loved, and free, in awe and wonder to recall his life laid down for me. I come with Christians far and near to find, as all are fed, the new community of love in Christ's communion bread. As Christ breaks bread and bids us share, each proud division ends. That love that made us makes us one, and strangers now are friends. And thus with joy we meet our Lord, his presence always near. Is in such friendship better known, we see and praise him here. Together met, together bound, we'll go our different ways. And as his people in the world, we will live and speak his praise. With that, I say amen with joy and with love and with utter thankfulness for the life of St. Patrick's.
are my friends, says the Lord, no longer servants, but friends. The Apostles' Creed, Book of Common Prayer, page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the, On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrage A can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 97. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, you make us glad with weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. Amen.
Prayers of the People are Form 4. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Grant all people wisdom, compassion, and hope as they make safe and healthy choices for their life and for the lives of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially our parish family, Chris and Carrie Altmeyer, Cindy Altman, Caroline Short, Joe, Amy, and Sophie Bowden, Jim and Teresa Bentley, Colleen Bivens, Gary and Mary Von Balls, and Mother Chris Brannick. We pray for all the women who are mothers, caring for their own children, others' children, and anyone else who needs the support they lovingly give. We know that mothers come in all shapes, sizes, and roles. We pray a prayer of thanksgiving for all their sacrifices and unconditional love that they give to all who cross their paths. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Ascension, Mount Sterling, and Robert, Reverend Rob Slocum. Grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We pray especially for the ongoing needs of Jimmy, Leah Grace, Ron, Nancy, and John. We pray for healing for Donna, Rick, John, Patrick, Tegan, Alan, Fran, Gary, Betty Lou, Claire, Sheila, Doug, Lynn, and Jeannie. We pray also for the special needs of the McCreary family for Howard, for Carol, Julie, for Teresa, and for Anna. We pray for healthy pregnancies and safe deliveries for Jessica and Allie. We pray for all the men and women in the armed forces, especially Nick, Adam, Stacy, Connor, Joe, and Nicholas. Give all of them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Richard and Sherry, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. 
take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. O oh, eternal God, bless all schools, colleges, and universities, especially all those who are graduating after a year of distance learning and all the challenges that brought achieving their goals despite the obstacles they have had and overcome. Bless the educators who adapted, served, and continue to serve their students throughout this pandemic to give them stability, support, and ensure that they reach their goals. We pray that they continue to be lively centers for sound learning, new discovery, and the pursuit of wisdom, and grant that those who teach and those who learn may find you to be the source of all truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. The General Thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving the kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for your creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.
Well, it's time for our announcements and um, the Zoom virtual coffee hour. But as I've said the last couple of weeks, on Sunday, May 23rd, we will celebrate the Feast of Pentecost as a whole church. And this year, um, we will be celebrating that in the backyard of Janie and Bill Kane's. We will send out the address and we will invite you, if you can, to bring your own lawn chair. And um, this is really exciting. The following weekend, we will begin our two services on each weekend, one on Saturday evening at 4.30 and one on Sunday morning at 10.30. As I said last week, um, Janie Kane and I will be calling all members of the parish and asking you um, which your preference is and if you're willing to attend one or both of those services so that we can divide the parish um, somewhat equally into two groups um, and that we can be able to worship safely indoors, um, keeping some physical distance and with our mask on. So if you haven't heard from one of us yet, you will be hearing from us um, over the next few days and be thinking about if you have a preference for one or the other of those two services. With that, I say the peace and joy and love of Christ be with you and also with you.